You ready for this? <laughs> okay. Hey guys, so this is my best friend, What's Jenny. Up, bitch? <laughs> this is Jenny Sevilla. Um, so Sorry. I picked. <laughs> I picked her obviously first because you know she's my bitch, and she's very very interesting and extremely inspiring. So I figured, why the fuck not? So <laughs> we're gonna start tea time out real quick. We went to boot camp together. She was my guide, and if you ever see me with my clients and making them do their hair, she's the reason because. Yeah, girl couldn't do her hair in boot camp, so she had to wake up at like 3 in the morning, at like all the time, to help me out. So, <laughs> so, from that to this, we are best friends now. And, you know, there's a lot more to it, but. I love you. <laughs> but, so, we are going to talk a little bit about Jenny, so you can get to know her because she's bomb. And, um, I'm alright. It ain't all bad. <laughs> So why don't you tell us a little bit about your childhood, your early on uh, pre-Marine Corps, whatever oh. you want to share. Ooh. Did I get you off? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, girl, I'm not trying to ruin my makeup. Okay. And you know it's going to make me cry. But uh, I grew up, I came to the United States in 1999. I was five years old with my family, with my mom and my brother. Uh, after a year, <clears throat> oh, I was born in <laughs> La Bomba Jutiapa, Atlantida, Honduras. So, Google me, bitch. <laughs> we'll have to get some Google Maps. <laughs> get your Google Maps, baby. Um. Anyway, so about a year into living here in the United States, the man that my mother had married uh, would abuse her and us. So, obviously, we had to leave that home. So, up until I was fifteen. Yes, 15 years old. We lived in battered women's shelters. Um, at that same time, my mom didn't have her uh, youngest baby, Larry, at the time. So she was fighting a custody battle at the same time while we were living in battered women's shelters. And we lived all over in Minnesota. So there wasn't just one place that we lived. I didn't really have a childhood simply because I never established childhood friends because I never stayed at a school longer than three months. So... There's not much of a childhood except doing hood rat shit with my brother, and that's about it. But then fo fast forward to me in my later teen years, I left the house to join the Marine Corps at 17 years old, and that's where I met my best friend. We weren't best friends at the time. No. Everybody hated me. Everybody, probably, a lot of people still probably hate me, but bitch, ask me if I could. Because, <laughs> I mean, at that time, the Marine Corps and boot camp, it's different different people it's it's a different environment it's You're 17 18 years old yeah yeah so I mean I don't really care because at the end of the day after boot camp yeah we're still together so. it's true um going backtrack a little bit tell us why you joined the Marine Corps I had multiple reasons I mean growing up also in the better women's shelters we didn't have any money we were extremely poor I remember eating like tortillas with uh, salt and butter for a couple of months straight in better women's shelters because you're pretty much eating what you can provide for yourself but living in better women's shelters you can't have like a steady job because you're trying to stay away from your abuser so whatever my mom could make working at a 3M factory actually making styrofoams and stuff like that she'd bring home and I mean we could we would eat what we could and then when we finally got our first apartment it was uh, with section 8 and we were on welfare, so I'm not, that's, I, I don't believe myself to ever be better than anybody because I grew up with welfare, Section 8, um, government help. So a huge reason why I did join the Marine Corps is because I felt the United States gave so much opportunity to me and my family. And, and at the same time, I felt like I wanted to give back because this is a land of opportunity and opportunities present themselves every day. So that was another way of me paying back. Because without that, without the help, without Section 8, without welfare, without assistance, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Um, who knows where I'd be, honestly. Like, who knows, you know, selling drugs, crazy, crazy shit. But that was my way of paying back. Statistics says we should have been successful. Greatly. <laughs> we should have been on the opposite side of the spectrum, but we're not. And... 
for me, I'll always be grateful to the Marine Corps and the United States, which is why I'm such a patriot. This isn't where I was born. This isn't my country of origin, but it's like you're adopted. You could be given up by your birth parents, but at the same time, you're going to love the parents that adopted you because you have been given so much and so much opportunity. That was a huge reason why I joined the Marine Corps. Obviously, the second reason was I always wanted to be an obstetric doctor. I couldn't because where am I going to get the money from? And honestly, I'm not a person who learns by just reading a book. I'm super hands-on. I have to, it has to be ran through over and over and that kind of situation in school, how they teach you. It just wasn't, it didn't work for me. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work for a lot of people. Um, that's so funny because now I'm a teacher in the schoolhouse. So <laughs> I definitely get a lot of the Marines who don't learn by just reading off of a screen or out of a textbook. I definitely break it down Barney style until they get it. And I'm pretty proud of that because I understand where a lot of those Marines come from. Um, Same learning too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people learn like yeah. that. They just... Good for the Marines or the people in general who can just read a book and understand yeah. quantum physics by just staring at it. Not me. Not me. <laughs> so tell us your MOS, what you do in the Marine Corps, if you chose that job, the whole shebang, what what it entails, that, that whole thing. Oh, you shouldn't have asked me that because now you put me on the spot. And oh, if there's Ordies watching, they're going to be like, traitor. So I joined the Marine Corps with that. It's the basic code that you get, like airfield services or whatever, because I want to be crash fire rescue. Mm. I want to be a, a cool fire. Time. Yeah, I want to be a firefighter in the Marine Corps. However, there's only two ways of going about it. You either get firefighter or you end up as aviation ordnance. Which, honestly, I am beyond grateful to be ordnance. It's the best family I've ever had outside of my bloodline family. Of course, there is no other. MOS that I've ever seen, not in the air wing. Yes. You're, you're part of my family. You've been on that zone. You know? She's okay. blood to me. She's blood to me. So, Continue, no, bitch, you're thicker. You, you serve. You yeah, serve to me. She's the sweetest. Uh, oh, bless this bitch is my... There okay. isn't enough camera time for this bitch. Okay? To me, nah, I can film myself turning red. I'm red. Yeah, you anyway, anyways. Anyways. <laughs> anyways, going back to ordinance, the yeah. other family. <laughs> the other family, a lot of degenerate bastards that you wouldn't train in for anything. Yeah. But I'm ordinance, aviation ordinance for uh, Hueys and Cobras. Love the job, wouldn't trade it for anything else. Currently, though, I am an instructor at the schoolhouse, so I do teach the job, and I get all the new generation of <laughs> aviation ordinance men. How's that? It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. I mean, <laughs> boy. What yeah. advice would you give anybody going into, you know, if they were going to be one of your students, what would advice would you give, especially female Marines? Come in with a positive attitude. No matter what, even if you don't, if it's not what you realized it was, don't drop your pack and it's going to be the best worst time of your life. <laughs> That's simply broken down in. You're going to enjoy it because when you're out of it, you're going to look back and it went by so fast and you're going to be like, dang, I wish I could go back and do this differently. Don't look back wanting to do something different. Move forward with doing greatness. That's deep. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you went into the Marine Corps, you went through MOS school, then you went to Oki, right? And that's yeah. when you yeah, met. Your husband Kelly. Wrong. No. Okay, Wrong. so tell me about Kelly. Oh, so <laughs> he Cause is, they have a really cute dating story leading up to it. I thought it was funny and it's awesome. It's unique. It's very unique. It's unique. <laughs> I am a very prideful person, so no you will what? never you catch me. <laughs> right. I mean I'm definitely not one of those people who reaches out and for help for myself, but I'll definitely help everybody so else kind of thing. So annoying. Uh, no, it's not. You do the same, bitch. <laughs> I know. We are literally the same. We're we literally have to, like, force each other help. And then we're like, no, no, no. I she would yeah. know. <laughs> we have to beat the shit out of each like, other literally. to help each other. Literally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways, back to Kelly. <laughs> back to Kelly. I slid in his DMs. <laughs> I did not know that part. Yeah. I <laughs> slid in the, the tea. I was on the book, you know, Facebook, and I was like, <laughs> the Facebook, because that's, yeah. that's, that's what it was back then. He, he had a group, 
picture as his profile picture. I'm like, let me click this real quick. And then I scroll and then I see him. I was like, oh, that's a nice. Was he looking suggested friends? Yeah. Um, <laughs> suggested yeah. friends. But I mean, we worked on the same like third uh, mall okay. uh, line or whatever. So everyone knows each other. It's mm -hmm. a really small community, especially the air wing. Like everybody knows everybody. So I clicked this picture and I'm scrolling through. I was like, that's too fine. My like, hot. <laughs> my hot. I'm sitting here like, bitch, it's hot. I was scrolling through the pictures. I was like, you gonna be my husband. <laughs> you gonna be my husband. A few years later. A few years later, yeah. So I dated. We dated. I broke up with his ass. <laughs> a day before his birthday. Because he tried it. He tried a real bitch. <laughs> and then I went on a hot air balloon ride with somebody else on Valentine's Day. It's your ass get. And I, I remind him every time. I was like, you remember. <laughs> you remember. You ain't gonna do me dirty because you remember. Oh, so, shit. Uh, we were like broken up and then I ended up going to the unit that he was at. <laughs> so we were working in the same unit. He left Advon to Oki first. I was like, thank God I ain't got to see him because he's still fine as fuck. <laughs> and I'd be getting nervous and I'll duck straight into a different room or so, so I don't have to see him. But it's so funny because we talked about it and he did the same thing. He started like getting nervous and would run off to pretend to do something that was completely out there. He was I can see Kelly doing that. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not confrontational. He's no, such, not at all. Not at no. all. Sweet, <laughs> docile, but I mean, I'm married. Not saying, so. I'm not saying you wear the pants. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so tell me about your date. It was the date was in Oki. No, it was Wait, here. Where was no? That was here. It was in the one I know about. Yeah, the yeah, one okay, I know okay. about. Um, our first date, I went to his little barracks room. <laughs> Super cute, and it's so it's so funny because I walked into his room. It was like the cleanest room, smelled so good, and I was like, impressions. I was like, first no impression. He must have cleaned up like <laughs> an hour before. So I romantic. Him. Yeah, it was really nice, and I could see he was really nervous because you know right here you can see someone's heartbeat. Yeah. I thought his heart was about to jump out of his chest, like, and he's like, "You want some wine?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And he's like opening the bottle, like nervous. Like, I was like, yeah. And I'm just staring at him like. Is he okay? Like, <laughs> Jesus. So he opens it up. We have a glass of wine, and he's like, "You look amazing." I was like, in my mind, I'm like, "Don't." <laughs> but I was like, "Oh, thank you." You know, being me, because I can't show him I'm, I'm that bitch yeah. from the get go, because it'll probably scare him off. And he's a cute ass white boy, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, um, we have our wine. We leave to go to sushi. Now, I'm definitely one of those people. If you've ever eaten with me. I don't talk while I eat. Bitch, I'm eating and then we can talk. We get along really well when we like, eat. But my husband, <laughs> oh my god. We sat down, we did the all you could eat sushi. So I'm sitting there, I ordered like five full rolls, uh, miso soup, edamame, and gyoza. You're I'm sitting there, food. I'm getting my food. We get all our food together at the same time. I'm done with three rolls, he's eating two pieces of sushi. Asking me questions, and I'm kind of looking at him like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> Poor I mean, I guess it's me that doesn't know how to go on dates, but yeah. I'm sitting there, I scarf down all my food, I'm drinking my miso soup like a fucking heathen, like, yes. tilting it back. Um, and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this bitch. And then, um, comes time to pay. So, like, I don't like to talk while I eat, obviously. I don't find a conversation. I don't even drink my soda until I'm done eating. It was just the way I was raised. You don't, if you're eating, obviously, that's your priority. Yeah, like, I'm there to eat. Plus, like, being poor, if you got food in front of you, you gonna eat the bitch. You don't got time to talk. Yeah. I guess that's just, like, a really weird mentality to have, especially because you didn't grow up around large amounts of foods and stuff like that, that you're there to eat, you know, and yeah. I don't know, because for us, similar, but different. Because yeah. for us, like, well, when are we gonna have good food like this yeah. again? It's, it's a really weird mentality, but... From time to pay, I didn't let him pay for first dates. And ladies, men think they slick trying to pay for the first date and then try to get freaky. Like you owe them something. That was definitely one of my things. Like I don't let men buy me, well never used to because now I'm married. <laughs> but I didn't let men buy me drinks or food or any of that kind of stuff because at the end of the day, it's almost like they're expecting you to give them something. To like repay them. Like, bitch. Expect these nuts, cause. <laughs> so we left off on why you don't let men buy on the, especially on the first date. Yeah. 
because they expect you to give them some horsey. Horsey. <laughs> we just don't do that around here. We're not doing that. Um, so, it was like 10 minutes of us going back and forth. I was like, you're not paying for my fucking food, bitch. Like, it's not happening. And then, our first date lasted a month. We actually went back to his barracks room and watched a scary movie. And he really tried it, bitch. He tried to put his hand up my shirt, like, rubbing on my back. I was like, stop. We're watching a movie. You invited me to come watch a movie. <laughs> and that's what we're going to fucking do. And that's what we're, that's what the fuck we doing, <laughs> watching a fucking movie. He really tried it. It was funny. He tried. Was, he tried. And on the first date, uh, I didn't know he didn't like scary movies. And, we were <laughs> and I love scary movies. So we are watching from Dust Till Dawn or something, which isn't even that scary. It's just it's pretty good, like, Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. Um... And I remember he, then he's like, once he realized like I was not gonna fuck him, like I'd rather punch him in the face before I fuck him, <coughs> then he laid down next to me and we started watching the movie. And I waited for a scary part to come up. This is our first date, so I'm just trying to gauge this guy. And then I like jump and I do like the, <laughs> shit, scared the shit out of me. This motherfucker <laughs> jumps from one side of his like, little tiny twin barracks like bed, from one side to the other end, like by the headboard with the blankets and out. I died laughing. Like from that point forward, I stayed in his room for like a month straight. He was not touching me, so don't even try it. Um, we just like hung out. We did so much fun shit together. Like straight, a month straight, a whole month straight, a whole month straight. Yeah. Really. And then that? you know, fast forward how few years, right? Or was it like a year or two? This was like in 2014. Yeah. So. And then we got married last year in February after dating. Um, went to Puerto Rico for a honeymoon during the hurricane. During the hurricane. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and we thought, we're going to fucking die. So what do you do before you die? Have sex. And guess who got pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> With our, the baby Lucian. Yeah. But we did actually plan the pregnancy because uh, we got my birth control taken out. It was in the work, so this little brown bean baby was planned 100% in Puerto Rico during the hurricane. It's a good story. Yeah. And now he can know someday how he was conceived in a storm. Oh, so technically he's kind of Puerto Rican, right? Uh, yeah. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's fast forward to this year with your business. Tell us how you came up with the idea with first the soaps, now we're on your lash line, and what's next? So just start from the Ooh, beginning with how you got how you got to the soaps first. What came up? How'd you come up with that idea? Okay, the soaps. Um, honestly, it was something that I really wanted to do for the longest time. But being in the Marine Corps, how much actual time do you get, like, to yourself? You know, and working on the flight line before, like. 12 on, 12 off is really 16 on to 18 to however many hours on. Whatever you can manage to get off and sleep is what you get. So after having my baby, I went on maternity leave in Minnesota. My baby, all he did was sleep a lot. So I'm like, I need, I need to do something because I'm just being stagnant, not doing anything. Like it just was driving me crazy, and. Um, I had actually wanted to make cold process soaps for a long time, uh, and I had been make I made them before once, and it was just for my face. I was like, I'm gonna make these. These are like really good soaps. At least I think so. Maybe I'm just being biased, but I make them. They're better. badass. They're fucking awesome. Ten Ten would recommend, and that's because she's my best friend. No, uh, and they're made out of olive oil and fragrance oils, so it's like there's no parabens, none of that crazy shit. Um, I did that and I really liked how they look and then there was a girl like you should she's like do you sell these soaps or are you just like making them for yourself I was like oh no I'm just making them for myself she's like can I buy some off of you and I was like okay mm -hmm. <laughs> say it up. and then one of my Instagram uh, followers like uh, she's out she's super awesome uh, her Instagram is like chicks love candles she makes like these amazing candles I was like, amazing. She reached out to me. She's like, you know, you can set your website through this, this. So she was actually my plug for setting up my website. She nice. helped me out. Like, that was great. Yeah. Because I honestly wouldn't have known how to even start up a website without her telling me either. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
after that I just started doing that and then one thing that I love so much is makeup and cosmetics like not tell not tell right <laughs> um, check out her uh, other Instagram Sophia underscore slay it's badass all her makeup it's crazy I could never it's extra as well. it's very extra just like her I mean I'll do like natural looks and stuff but I like being extra because in a world full of ordinary ass people Bitch, I'm extra and no cost to you, so really, you're welcome, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I was like, I need to do my own lash line because, honestly, I walk into Sephora and they charge $24 to $32 for a pair of lashes. Bitch, wear. And they're plastic. They're not even mink. Like, the, there's one line they have that is mink, but it's $23 some dollars. And, I love those lashes and I was like all about it but I'm like bro I cannot keep spending $27 yeah, on each lashes you know yeah. um, and then I'm not fucking wearing some plastic ass Ardell lashes or some cheap ass I'm not doing it I don't like it um, I want it to look natural while not being natural at the same time like extra so which we're both wearing a pair of her lashes right now Rich. softcore porn <laughs> and these are apocalypse no Super different, taking over the world. I'm so snatching souls as edges, bitch. <laughs> so you came up with, so you came up with the eyelashes through that, then. Yeah, because I'm like, that's crazy, and I think it's just crazy. Twenty some dollars. Those uh, who sell those lashes, they are making a 500 percent profit. A 500 percent profit because through the manufacturer manufacturers that I went through, I sat down, you know. Did my designs, what I wanted, what my expectation was, nothing less than perfect. And I'm not charging $25 for a pair of lashes. That's crazy. Like, that's ridiculous. Significantly cheaper. Significantly cheaper, real make. So those of you who are, you know, in love with lashes as much as I am, you already know. Come to her website, which is uh, Selfless Care Beauty. The link is in my at only Sevilla, um account. Instagram account. Yes. And I'll also put it at the bottom, like right there, too. Yeah, right, right there. <laughs> right there. Uh, it will be there. It'll right be there. there. Right Somewhere there, bitch. Figure so it. what's what's next? We done the soaps. Um, oh, you also have the bath bombs, the shower. Um, yeah, I didn't put those uh, on the market because I'm kind of selfish, and I really, really like those. And I actually gave them to my friends because they were really good. So I was. I didn't want to charge for those because bath bombs are like. It's kind of an obsession. Like I love how it leaves your skin, yeah. all that. So I did super, really super nice, by the way. Like my skin felt so insanely good afterwards. As I'm telling you this, and she's not selling them, so be jealous. Yeah, I don't put them on. I don't think I'm gonna put them on for sale. I pretty much make them for my friends and my husband and I. So if I fuck with you, <laughs> you get them. You get a bath bomb. Yeah, and obviously, they're not, my friends aren't paying for that because. That's the only people I give it to, and that's my market right there, but it's a free market for them. It's something so, I really like to do. So we done the, the soaps, and now we are the eyelashes, what's next for the lashes, the makeup, like what's your, what's the next big thing for you? The next big thing? <laughs> Highlighters, bitch. Ooh, what? I remember her telling me about this last year. Yes. Um, it's so funny because I know a lot of people are easily offended, but I think in this day and age we need to add a little humor to a lot of tragedy because there's just so much going on, especially in our and it highlights it. it but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> and I was joking with her. I was joking, but not really. I was, yeah, I was very. I was like, <gasps> so I'm, I'm coming out with um, my own brand of highlighters. For my bad bitches who fuck with the glow heavy, bitch, if you don't, get with it or get lost. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, we, I was telling her I wanna, I'm going to make my brand of highlighters and I'm going to make one that's a beautiful uh, white with, you know, like a gold tone background or a blue tone background and I'm going to call it privilege. But a lot of you aren't going to get that because it's a white highlighter called privilege, white privilege. So. Um, it's satire within uh, the makeup, and if you're easily offended, 
I don't she's know not the line you. for you then. I'm not the line for you because I, frankly I don't give a fuck because I it just it's a universal line like if you can't handle some of that like something as simple as being said like white privilege or a line being called white privilege. Well, I don't know what to tell you because I mean my lashes are called softcore porn. <laughs> probably if you're like super religious, you're probably not gonna buy this brand of lashes called softcore porn. With a flyaway because you're flat. Fly away the, from the bitches. Yeah. <laughs> My lashes are so big, bitch, I could fly away from the bullshit. That's <laughs> yeah, why they're that big. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I mean, I just want to make a cosmetic line very inclusive. It, though, very personal to Very you. personal to me. I, I wasn't even allowed, to, the first time I ever wore makeup was when I was 19 in the Marine Corps. So, I didn't grow up wearing makeup, bitch. Makeup didn't even exist in my house, but I always saw my little high school like acquaintances with makeup on. I'm like, I wonder what that's like, like mm -hmm. to have parents to let you wear makeup. But frankly, I'm really glad I didn't grow up wearing makeup because skin's good. Nice. Well, yeah, because at that age, they don't know how to take care of their skin, how to after prep. And I saw a lot of girls go to parties and sleep in that makeup, and I'm just like, Yo. bitch. Yo. But I mean, it is what it is. Like everybody does their own thing. <laughs> Record me doing that shit, girl. Oh, I did. All right. Okay. Oh shit. Bitch, I just fucked up my. Head. <laughs> Look at this. It's okay. All right, whatever. All right. So we are back. Yeah, take that <clears throat> little break. Um. So she's coming out with her own highlight line coming soon. I'm not telling you hoes when. You're just going to have to wait on it. That should give you a little, little tidbit. A little tidbit. But her eyelashes are out right now. They're fucking lit. Check it out on her website. Um, but yeah, so you... Let's talk about the Marine Corps getting out. What's your plan? What do you want to do? Oh, okay. Well, I'm getting out of the Marine Corps because, honestly, two active duty service members with a child is not very conducive to a happy home. Especially because... Well, your husband's also a recruiter. Yeah, and I see him like 10 minutes out of every day. Mm -hmm. I see him a little bit more on the weekends, but not as much as I'd like to because he's still working Saturdays, Sundays, and stuff. Um, I'm getting out. I'm going to go to school. I want to do sonography, which is pretty much being like an ultrasound technician. I can see you do that. Run my business and be there for my baby and go to his sports games and... Shit like that. Just be a mom. The ultimate mom. The ultimate mom. Yeah. Fuck those other soccer. Moms. The extra mom, though. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Could come up like completely all dialed up, like selling those moms your lashes. Probably yeah. giving them makeup lessons too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like a, a phenomenal um, life you got planned for yourself. Uh, Kelly's planning on staying in or yes yeah. he wants to submit his officer package so he can stay yeah. in and claim what he wants to do is he wants to pass his GI bill down to Lucian so that's pretty neat that'll be awesome for yeah. him too but we ain't gonna tell him so he can work hard in school you know because if <laughs> you tell him we got your college paid for him, yeah he won't yeah <laughs> so we're just gonna tell him no we broke you need to work hard yeah we ain't got no money to send your ass to college you better he's gonna work hard yeah, yeah. exactly so, we're going to close with this advice that you would give young women, whether they're, you know, back in pre-Marine Corps life, like if you were going to give advice for yourself or any young woman like that, what would you be giving them? Never aim to please, aim to kill. That's fucking deep. On that note, this is Jenny, my best fucking friend. Check out her fuck it. She just came out with her own YouTube channel. She's <laughs> just working on it. I'm working on mine. We're, we're working on it. We're working um, on it. <laughs> but yeah, stay tuned for all of her releases. Check out her website. Check out her IGs. They're going to be all listed, I think. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be right there. They're going to be somewhere there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. But yes, this is the queen herself. And thanks for, you know, having me over. You know, oh. you're a lot. <laughs> Having an hour, yeah. I'm just trying to do like the formality. Don't you thing. still have a key to my house? Or was yeah. it their old house? Old house. I gave it back. I gave it back. Oh yeah, I think I lived with her momentarily a couple months. <laughs> yeah, this bitch. She's harder to find than Waldo. Yeah. Like if this bitch does not want to be found, she won't be found. Yeah. 
I have a question for you. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you could give these future leaders of America oh, any man. advice, what would it be? Oh, man. We're talking about, like, Marines? All around, though. Whether it's the Marine Corps, they're going out into the real world and experiencing life away from their <sighs> mother's titties. <laughs> <laughs> um, well... For people that are like us, I think you've already learned that in order to succeed, you kind of have to have yourself, but also truly be a good person. But for the people that didn't learn that early on, or just, you know, they're really lost in sauce, if you just learn to just be, do the right thing and be a good fucking person, because um, I just see a lot of shitty people in this world. Like, portray themselves yeah, as good people. Yeah, don't be fake. Be <clears throat> be yourself. Embrace who you are, but like most importantly, like kind of just do the right thing and I mean that's really generic and you know, whatever. Yeah. But like I think you can find being whoever you are, but also being a good person and it takes you a lot long like a lot farther than if you were a shitty person being fake or whatever and you um you attract what you extract. What you put what you out, project. yeah. What do you project? <laughs> so if you, you know, if you want to be surrounded by those type of people, which is the only people I surround myself with, then you should start mimicking that for yourself and like truly embracing that um, and making the world a little less shittier by being not a shitty person. Yeah, which is why I genuinely love your content because. You know, you post what you love to do all the time. You're real. You don't pretend to be anything else. Exactly how you are on your account is how you are in real life, which is, you know, which is why I surround myself with you because I'm the exact same way. What you see, like, okay, yeah, I might be ratchet, loud, all that kind of shit, but at the same time, I'm still that person. I'm not going to switch it up just because I'm in a room full of different people. Like, yeah. I don't put on different masks for different people, and you don't either, which is why we get along so great because it is what it is and how it's going to be. Yep. So. And if you want people like her in your life, you gotta really step up your own shit. Like, Jenny has been, I tell people whenever I explain our friendship, she's my anchor. And literally, she is. Uh, I tell, you know, some of my other friends, she scares the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> I'm just, super nice. Just because, like, I also don't really have too much of my own family either. Like, this is my family. It's, like, really scary. I just, I'm not telling you guys what it is. But I'm making a huge life decision, and mm -hmm. I was scared shitless telling her last week. This bitch tries to sneak it in like it was nothing. Like, yeah, I just, like, I was like, <laughs> and this, and she's like, bitch, what? Rewind. But anyways, like, it's just, she's one of the closest people I have in my entire life, and she holds me to this, like, extremely high standard. Um, I don't know. She's made me into a really, really, a much better person than I was before, pre-Jenny, so... For the record, she's always been a great, phenomenal person. Is just a lot of people around her did not allow her to be herself and show the world Chopped him off. how genuine she is, which I think what she did was really great for herself is she cleansed herself of negative people who only bring um, bad shit onto her because, like she said earlier, you surround yourself with people like you want to be. You mm -hmm. want to be successful or are you going to hang around a bunch of people who aren't going anywhere in life? Probably not, because they can't offer you life plans, what your goal is, you know, they don't ask you about your dreams. Get you people who ask you about your dreams, what you want to do, where you want to be in three, five, ten years. Those kinds of people, and people who question your genuine interest in a positive manner, like, what makes you want to do this? Why do you want to do this? How do you see yourself in five years? How long can you last in said profession? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Literally what she did. <laughs> with logic and reason behind yeah. it, and you know, me, she's a sister to me, so when she tells me she's going to, you know, move forward with her plan, like she said, I'm not going to tell y'all. She'll probably release it and tell you guys later on, but it's scary because <laughs> it, I don't have any sisters. I never knew what it was like to have a sister, and to have her is like the biggest blessing. It's God knew we couldn't grow up together, <laughs> but he said, bitch, stand the fuck by. I got somebody for you. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, and like kind of piggybacking off of that and also... No, when every staff and CEO says, just a caveat off. Just, just a caveat, you know, furthermore, um, it would be... No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was just a really... I wouldn't say I was a shitty person growing up, but I was like a super people pleaser. Um, 
That I, doesn't make you a shitty person. I, yeah, it doesn't make you a shitty person, but, like, as a kid, like, I was an outcast, like, a huge tomboy, um, among other things. Just, like, I had that, that family situation. I was that girl, whatever, and, you know, I just wanted to fit in, and, like, I didn't really have any girlfriends growing up. Like, high school, I dated a kid, and... Uh, he was one of the popular kids and whatever and like I just wanted to be part of that crowd and that was I mean that it wasn't who I was like high school and just like that whole phase was just not me and like the Marine Corps allowed me to be who I wanted to be and who I was actually really from the beginning like this I think this year and last year has been the most I've been who I am to the core when I stopped giving a fuck about anybody else's opinion except for the people that mean the most to me so I think like if you want to find and be happy and be yourself and be like you gotta learn to stop caring about other people's acceptance because that's that was like the biggest thing for me too and I thank you for that because you know I was I was just a little lost hope but without you <laughs> it was definitely a fight to be like Bitch, stop giving yeah. a fuck about these yeah. people's opinions. They don't pay. They don't yeah. pay your bills. They, yeah. you know, they don't even make you happy. So why yeah. do you care about them? Yeah. Um, if you're around people, you know, who you, whose advice and opinions you cherish a lot, but they're not helping you succeed, you need to take a step back and evaluate the entire situation, entire friend circle you have, because those aren't your friends. There's people who will do that give you the bad advice so you won't be successful because they secretly don't want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. They want you to be at their level so then they can look around and be like, I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable and they've settled with their life choices and they don't want to see you succeed and be like, oh, I used to know that person. How did they get ahead? But I'm still here. And also know when you outgrow <clears throat> someone too. Like, that's a big one too. Like, I had amazing, I had a few really, really, truly good friends, um, you know, in high school and in the beginning of the Marine Corps and like throughout the Marine Corps but a lot of them I outgrew like I had people I was friends with for years and like as the seasons in the seasons in my life were changing the chapters were changing like I needed in order to succeed and continue to grow I had to close those chapters and um, you know leave those people behind too yeah. but you know at first it's really hard but like I would never in a million years would I be where I'm at today, and I <laughs> held on to those relationships and talk toxic friendships. So yeah, I think one of the biggest things for me was uh, I always thought about it this way: stagnant water breeds disease. Yes. If that water exactly, is not running, yeah. it's not moving. It's not a river. It's full of disease. Yeah. It can't even you know sustain aquatic life. It can't sustain any kind of life. It's just all it does is breed disease. So if you know you're stuck in a pond, bitch, move to a river. An ocean. An ocean. An ocean. We're, bitch, we ain't rivers. We're oceans. <laughs> rivers are fresh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oceans are salty, though. Uh, yup. Anyways. <laughs> so, you know why, right? No, I don't, actually. Because whales secrete, like, a hundred-some gallons of sperm. Is that true? No, yeah. Oh, that's kind of. I don't think that's really why, though. Oh. <laughs> Fun know. fact. Ew. Put um, that out. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> Anyways, now you can see how gullible I really am. This is why I keep my hair blonde. This looks so bomb. This shit is like a silver platinum. I'm gonna be like, going like uh, Game of Thrones status next. Bitch, me. like my wig? Yes, like your wig. She trying to be that Khaleesi. You feel me? Yes, I be a woman. Yes, I be your baby. Yes, I be whatever that you tell me when you're ready. Yes, I be your girl, forever your lady. You ain't never got a word. I'm down for you, baby. Uh, best believe that when you need that, I'll provide that.